My name is Henry, and now we'll go ahead and demonstrate how to do a simulated uh, barium study uh, for a canine patient. I've got our uh, simulated patient here, and this patient we estimate to be around a 26 kilogram dog. We'll be performing this um, GI study for uh, chronic vomiting, um, just to rule out any underlying uh, pathological disease that may be uh, causing his symptoms. There's a lot of indications for um, barium studies, um, vomiting, inappetence, uh, chronic anorexia, um, constipation, um, foreign body ingestion, things of that nature. These um, issues, we would use the uh, barium study to look for intestinal obstructions, um, and the goal is we're looking for the transit time from the time that we administer the barium to the patient all the way up until the barium has moved through the gastrointestinal tract and passed through the intestine. Some contraindications uh, for um, a barium study would be suspect gastric perforation, um, intense or extreme damage to the uh, GI mucosa, which um, especially when passing the stomach tube, improper technique can cause a GI perforation um, or in uh, intestinal uh, perforation would be another thing that we would have to seriously consider our technique um, and if or not the study was uh, worth the risk. I've gone ahead and gotten a tray of materials ready to go. Um, for this particular patient, we will be um, administering the barium via orogastric intubation. So I've got a roll of some white tape that I will use as a mouth speculum to pass the uh, orogastric tube. I've got a uh, piece of orogastric tubing that is sufficient enough to get past the last rib uh, and into the stomach. I've got some sterile lubricant that we'll use to lubricate the end of the tube to facilitate passing the tube down the esophagus, um, just to make that go a little bit easier and avoid any potential esophageal damage that could potentially occur with rough passing of the orogastric tube. I've got some exam gloves and I've got my barium. This is a 60% weight and volume uh, barium uh, uh, contrast suspension. So we've gone ahead and pre-calculated uh, his dose. You can use anywhere from five to eight milliliters per kilogram of body weight for a dog this size. At 26 kilograms, we've gone ahead and calculated 180 cc's of the barium mixture, which I've pre-drawn up into uh, 60 cc syringes that we'll go ahead and um, administer that through the orogastric tube. Um, this patient is, will be a, awake for this procedure, um, and we usually don't sedate patients for uh, barium studies, as a lot of the medications that can be used for sedation can actually decrease gastrointestinal transit time. So a lot of the opioids, the anticholinergics, um, they can significantly slow down the transit time. Um, some medications can delay gastric emptying, which can cause erroneous results when we're actually looking at how far the barium has traveled when we take these timed films. What we're gonna do is before we even um, start with the barium, we're gonna go ahead and take what are called scout films. And I will take a lateral image and a ventral dorsal image of the patient before administering any barium. This is basically going to give us a good idea of the anatomy and the structure um, and identify anything that is there pre prior to administration of the barium. We'll then go ahead and administer the barium. Um, I'll have a assistant in here helping me with patient restraint. And then we'll go ahead and take another shot, an another set of x-rays immediately after the barium is given. And then we'll go ahead and take another set 30 minutes later, and then another set 60 minutes later. Depending on the transit time and how far the barium has moved along, there may be additional images that are requested by the veterinarian in command. Um, and the timing of when the images are taken will vary based off of what the veterinarian is actually looking for. Um, as far as patient preparation, we want to ideally, the patient would be fasted uh, for 12 to 24 hours, depending on the patient's health status, um, just to make sure that the um, stomach is completely empty of all food sources, and um, this will provide a better diagnostic image. Um, the GI contrast study can be performed if the patient has not been fasted in more urgent situations, but it is definitely recommended that your patient is fasted for 12 to 24 hours. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw some lead on, and then I will go ahead and take the scout films, and then we'll get started with passing the orogastric tube and administering barium. 
So now we'll go ahead and demonstrate how we would actually pass the orogastric tube and administer the barium. I've got our assist assistant here who has our patient in a standing restraint. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure my orogastric tube. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually measure from the end of the nose all the way down to the last rib. Now in this patient, since he doesn't have ribs, I can't actually feel them, but his last rib would fall right around here. So what we'll do is I'll go ahead and place the tube at that location, and we're gonna follow the anatomic curve up the esophagus and out of the end of the mouth. So the end of the nose would be right about there. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that area on my tube with some white tape. So I'm going to go ahead and apply some exam gloves. Now we will have this patient um, in a sitting restraint. Um, he doesn't really move much, but uh, we would have this patient in a sitting restraint. Um, you can also do it in a lateral recumbency restraint. Um, whatever is tolerated best by the patient since the patient is um, awake for this procedure. So I'm going to go ahead and lubricate the end of my orogastric tube here with some sterile lubricant. This will facilitate passage of the tube down the esophagus. And then we're going to go ahead and place a um, roll of white tape in the mouth to act as a speculum. This will prevent the patient from being able to bite down on the tube, um, causing any potential complications. So I'm just going to go ahead and place that tube, that roll, tape roll there as a speculum. Kelsey's going to hold his muzzle closed around the uh, roll of tape. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed my tube gently down the esophagus and I'm just pushing very, very gently. If I notice any resistance, I would back up and redirect and things are going very, very smoothly here. So I'm approaching my tape line here. So we're right at the end of our tape line where the end of the stomach would be. The way I'm gonna go ahead and confirm that the tube is actually in the esophagus and not the trachea. One, my patient may have been coughing if uh, the tube was going into the trachea. And if I feel down in the thoracic inlet and go just slightly cranial to that, I can feel the trachea and I can feel the esophagus. So. I can actually feel two tubular structures um, right next to the trachea. So I'm fairly confident that my tube is in place. Fairly confident isn't enough when we're administering liquids into a patient. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use my stethoscope and listen to the abdomen. And I'm just going to inject some air into the tube. And what I'm looking for is a um, is a uh, gurgling sound. So I did get that. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead. I've got some a very small amount. This is about four cc's of some sterile saline. We're going to go ahead and administer that into the tube. And we're going to do this kind of slowly, but we're going to do that and watch for a cough reflex. And there was no cough reflex, so I am confident that my tube is in the proper position. So now I'm going to go ahead and pre-calculated 180 cc's of a 60% um, weight by volume uh, barium sulfate solution. And we're going to go ahead and we are going to administer the barium. So barium is kind of a, um, the suspension is kind of on the thick side. And while we're administering this, we're monitoring our patient for any retching, any coughing, um, anything that may indicate <clears throat> that the patient is having difficulty. Before I remove my syringe, I'm gonna go ahead and just kink the tube. And I'll go ahead and administer the second syringe. And when you're administering barium, you wanna be very cautious not to get the suspension on the patient or anywhere on your table because that will cause a radiographic artifact. 
and it's two syringes in. And our patient is tolerating this well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just follow this with a little bit of air just to push the remainder of the barium out of the end of my orogastric tube. So now I'm gonna go ahead and kink my tube that all of our barium has been inserted and I'm going to keep the tube kinked. And in one smooth motion, I'm going to go ahead and withdraw the tube from the patient's mouth. I'm gonna take a look at my watch and start a timer. Um, so it is 11.30. We'll go ahead and take a 30-minute post-administration radiograph to evaluate gastric motility, and then we'll go ahead and follow that with a 60-minute post-radiograph. The, again, I had stated earlier in the introduction, the timing of the uh, when the images are taken may vary from practice to practice, but we'll go ahead and monitor this patient um, while he sits for the next 30 minutes. Um, we'll monitor for any vomiting or anything like that, and then we'll bring him back into radiology and we'll go ahead and shoot those images. And that is how you administer barium within our gastric tube.